Hello everyone, it's me, Brother Randy, and today we continue our look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, and we begin in verse 18 of 1 Corinthians, where the Apostle Paul wrote, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but, to, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Now, last week we saw where the Apostle Paul uh, rebuked the Corinthian church uh, for the divisions that were within them. And today he gets to the central message of the church. That is, Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Uh, he reminds us this in verse 23, but we preach Christ crucified. Uh, he, he mentions, and uh, leading up to that, for the preaching of the cross is, uh, is to them that perish foolishness. Uh, it is. It's foolishness to uh, the unconverted world. And to some of you who are listening, it may be seem foolishness, idiotic the gospel is. You may laugh at it. Well, the Apostle Paul said that would be true about you and about many, that it's foolishness unto to you, uh, that, that humans are redeemed from their sins by what Jesus Christ did on a cross as he suffered there and made the one perfect sacrifice. It's not accepted by the world, but unto us who believe, it's the power of God. Uh, you know, he goes on and states, you know, I'll just, that, you know, that God, for his written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring it to nothing, uh, the understanding of the prudent. Uh, and he goes to verse 20, Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Uh, the wisdom of this world looks at this as crazy. This, uh, uh, that, that a blood sacrifice on the cross can save sinners. Because the world uh, believes that, you know, it's... Well, most, many of them don't even believe in God, but others, it's all about work salvation, what I do, how I can attain it. And that's world religion. But Christianity is all about what Jesus did at the cross, and that's foolishness to the world. They just don't believe it. Uh, where, is the, where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Have God not made foolish the wisdom of this world? Uh, God makes foolish the wisdom of this world. It thinks it knows so much. Uh, for he states, it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. That is the proclamation of this message of the gospel of Jesus Christ and him crucified. That is the message the church has. And too often today, folks, I believe churches have, and it's not just today, it's been in the past, 
Let's just be honest. That we've often de-emphasized the cross and sometimes just a little tag along and sometimes not even preaching it. Let's face it. Uh, if you're like me and been brought up in Baptist work, you've attended some church services where, uh, I mean, it's been some hard preaching, preaching on hell and damnation. And you might hear a preacher preach that for 35, 40 minutes, and then in the last 90 seconds, they'll throw in Jesus Christ on the cross. Just in the little, you know, just to make sure. They get a little touch of the gospel, but they got a heavy dose of the law, which when you preach on eternal judgment and hell, you're preaching the law. No, there's nothing wrong with preaching, and we should preach on hell and eternal judgment. But it should never, ever overshadow the gospel of grace. It should never overshadow the message of Jesus Christ and him crucified. Even if we're talking about hell and damnation, that the message of the gospel of the cross and what Christ did there is top priority. Because if you just preach on hell, you're going to leave people despondent. And don't get me wrong, the preaching of the law brings people, points people to the gospel. But you got to have the gospel in there. And not just preach and declare eternal judgment in hell. You also got to preach of eternal life found in Jesus Christ. Yes, there is a hell. Yes, there is judgment coming. But Jesus on the cross took our place. He took the place of sinners that all who would believe in him will be saved. That is the message that we must proclaim. And then there's others today who just want to preach a self-help message. That's all you get, self-help messages. Your best life now and all of this but the gospel is kind of you know, to the side. And that's, that, that's wrong also. We must not de-emphasize the cross. And look, there's some people who don't like the, the great emphasis on the cross and, the, and grace. Uh, I've heard some say well, that's just kind of a, uh, that's just a milk. You know, you got to get in some deeper stuff than just the cross. Uh, I don't think they know what they're talking about. I know they don't. Look, Jesus Christ and him crucified is the message that people need. And look, when they, I, I've heard them say, all you do is preach on the cross, preach on Jesus. I've heard them say, I've read people say that about what, uh, when we proclaim about the cross. Well, they don't understand. Look, not talking about the wood. And we're not just talking about the crucifixion. For when, when, when Paul states we preach Christ crucified, I believe he's talking about the entire work of redemption with the cross being center. For the resurrection declares, you read in Romans, I believe it's Romans chapter 4, is it verse, uh, oh, let me look there real quick before I, uh, I state something wrong. Uh, Romans chapter 4, uh, uh, and verse, uh, oh, verse 28, there, <coughs> no, that's not it. Uh, um, I thought I had it here. Um, uh, oh, I'm looking at the wrong chapter, chapter three, isn't it? Now you look at that. Uh, oh, Romans 4.25. This is what happens, folks, when you get bifocals and all this. But Romans 4.25 states this about Jesus, that he who was delivered for our offenses, that's what happened at the cross, and was raised again for our justification, that we are declared right in the sight of God, that we are justified in before God because of his resurrection. But it's the but it's what Jesus did at the cross. 
He was delivered for our offenses. And his resurrection declares that the cross is a victory. And so it all ties in here, folks. Jesus Christ and him crucified. There's no salvation apart from that. Even in heaven, we read in uh, in Revelation chapter 5 and verse 9, uh, it says, and they sang a new song saying, Worthy are you to take the scroll and open its seals, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed people from every tribe and language and people and nation. Here is mentioned the cross, Christ's sacrifice in heaven as the mighty throne praises the Lamb of God that he was slain. And by his blood, by your blood, you ransom people for God. And you go to verse uh, 12, where they're saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Yes, my friends, the cross is the central message that we proclaim. Uh, that as Paul states, for we preach Christ crucified. Uh, we preach a crucified Savior in the world. Well, like it states here, uh, you know, he, he stated before, uh, verse 23, for the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. Uh, the Jews, they require a sign. Jesus, if you remember, told them, you're going to get one sign. Only one sign, and that's a sign of the prophet Jonah. That is, he was in the belly of the well three days and three nights. Uh, I will be in the belly of the earth three days and three nights. Now, they didn't understand that, but it was, it was proven right. That sign was given when Jesus rose from the dead. And still, the majority do not believe. The, the Greeks... Seek after wisdom. They seek after wisdom, philosophy, the Greeks of, uh, of, uh, of Paul's day. And remember, he was writing here to uh, a church that was filled with Greek Christians. The church of Corinth was in Greece. And, and the Greeks uh, were big on philosophy. And they didn't understand a lot of this. And look, we who are... Who are Gentiles today, uh, you know, it, it don't make sense to a lot of people. We got to seek after it. We got to make sense out of everything. And, you, and, and, and the message of the cross confounds so many. But when he said we preach Christ crucified, it's under the Jews. It's a stumbling block. To this day, it's a stumbling block. I mean, it throws a wrench into their entire so-called religious beliefs. To the Greeks, again, it's foolishness. And to us who are in the Western world, for many, for many, this message is nothing but a bunch of foolishness. The message of Christ crucified. But any states, but unto them which are called both Jews and Gentiles, Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Uh, here he speaks of the sovereignty of God in salvation, that uh, the only reason anyone comes to know Christ is because they're called. Uh, if it was left up to our free will, we would never go to Christ. But Christ calls those of us who believe. We would never believe or have no desire to believe unless God calls us to salvation, to trust in the resurrected Savior, uh, to trust in him who was crucified for our sins. Look, this is the message we have. And I think today the church relies too much on entertainment and gimmicks and self-help stuff. And you might get the... You might get the crowds and all that for a little while, but are you preaching the gospel? Are you preaching about, about the uplifted Savior 
who died on the cross for sinners. Look, when he states in verse 25, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men, what they perceive to be weakness, what they perceive to be foolishness is stronger than all of humanity's wisdom and philosophy because it's not by what you achieve in your works that get you to heaven. It's by what Jesus did 2,000 years ago on the cross. Uh, let us lift this message up, this message of the cross, this message of Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And, of course, this also implies when we preach Jesus Christ and him crucified by naturally we're also uh, proclaiming the res the, his resurrection, that he is alive. Uh, but we're emphasizing what Christ did for us when we declare about our, our crucified and risen Lord that he took the sins of all who would believe upon him, and that he, that he is the Savior of this world for all who would believe upon him. Do you believe in him today, my friends? Have you trusted in the crucified and risen Lord? Uh, uh, if not, repent of your sins. Turn from your sin. Realize that he is the only Savior and that he, my friends, that if you trust him by faith, uh, you can have assurance of your salvation, that he took your sins on the cross and made them his own, and he died for them. And if you believe upon him, he gives unto you his righteousness. That's why we declare, we preach and declare a crucified Savior. Praise be to his name. God bless you all.